Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. Thank you for joining me on the day that you're joining me at the time that you're joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. We are in for another video today. We're gonna be talking about what it's like to be a developer at a smaller company. Being a software engineer at a small company is completely different than being a software engineer at a larger company. Now, fortunately for you, I've had experiences at both companies, so I'm gonna be going over smaller companies today, as I've mentioned. So let's talk about it. I say completely different, but you know, obviously each company is different in themselves and you, you, can't, you don't really know what's different from one than another unless you've been at all of them, which I'm pretty sure you haven't worked at all the companies. So it kind of just depends on the company, but typically they are different. I'll just say that much. One experience is not better than the other experience. They're just different experiences to have. Hey y'all, if this is your first time joining me, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video if you think it's gonna be great for you. Um, I'd love to see you back again soon. Also share it to anybody who you think may find this content helpful as well. Let's go. Let's go over the pros and cons of working at a smaller company lack of structure. Now I said each small company is different, each big company is different, but typically for smaller companies, there's not like a ton of structure in um, just the processes of how to do things. There's not typically a lot of structure, sometimes just within the company organization itself. The pro of that being the case is that you can then come in and help shape the structure of the company, of the team, of how you all are doing things, the processes, those sorts of things. So that's a positive thing for, for you to think about. So the cons. So most of the time in a smaller company, you're not gonna have like an agile process. So if you don't know what the agile process is, um, I will put a definition of it below, but, um, some resources below as well. Usually the ad, if it's not an agile process, it's some sort of process that the team follows. Otherwise you're just kind of like cherry picking things that you want to work on, which is not bad. It's just, I guess that's their process, right? So it kind of just depends on what you want. Like if you're a type of person that likes to be organized and stuff like that. So maybe, um, maybe you don't want to be in that environment because you need that structure, that organization. So just keep that in mind as you're job searching and um, looking at companies and what they have to offer and ask those questions as well. There, there also may not be a structure to define your level of a developer. So, okay, there are junior level de developers, there's mid-level devs, senior level devs, et cetera. And then some people might even say there's a software engineer one, a software engineer two and three, and all the way up to like principal and all this other stuff. Well, usually with a larger company specifically, that might be something that they've ironed out, but with a smaller company, they may not have that exact structure kind of nailed into stone. So just keep that in mind as well. Just keep um, asking those questions of like, okay, how do you get to the next level? Because if there's nothing that's set in stone for it, you're really gonna have to define that process yourself. So keep that in mind. The second point that I have is um, you might be working on something and then business decides it's no longer needed. This can really happen with a large company or a smaller company, but I've seen it typically happen more within a smaller company rather than a large company, which is why I added it to the list. The pro is that you know, you get to learn very quickly and you've worked on something new, uh, if it was something new for you, but you had the exposure of actually working on it and you put in the time and the effort to do that. So it's not, you should not be, um, you shouldn't be mad about it or whatever. It's just a part of business, but it's, a, it's something that you got a chance to experience. So take that in. And it's a very quick way to like ramp up your skill set as well. It's like, oh, I didn't know about this one thing. And then, you know, I did a project and it took me, you know, one or two weeks to do it. And then I found out that I don't need it anymore, but still I was able to do this new thing. So that could be kind of a, an exciting thing to kind of take away from it. But the con with that is that 
you know, you don't have a feature pushed up to get. So <laughs> that might be something that might hurt your ego a little bit if that's your, if that's something that you're concerned with. Um, and then maybe it's something that you're really passionate about. And then you no longer, it's since it's no longer needed, you no longer have to work on it. However, you can turn that con into a pro by kind of making it a passion project. So if you would like to continue working on something similar, maybe you can create your own like small project off to the side and kind of keep working on it as you can, if that's something that you want to pursue. So that's also something to think about as well. It's not a whole wash of a project unless it was something that you didn't really want to work on to begin with and then you lucked up. So it just kind of depends on what you're working on there. Like this video if you are enjoying it so far. I want to I want to hear from you. Have you ever worked at a smaller company before? What has been your experience? Comment below. Let us know. We want to hear about it. And if you want to work at a small company, maybe what is that reason that you want to work at a small company? Let's get back into the video. Okay, the third thing is a lot of times you just got to jump in and figure it out. Okay, you're just going to have to figure it out. The team doesn't even know what's going on. They don't know about this new feature. They don't know about this thing. The bug might be something they've never seen before. This could, again, happen anywhere. But a lot of times with a smaller company, you're typically working with a smaller team. And that means you don't have a large, diverse set of skills. And so you might just be kind of depending on your own devices, I guess, if you will. But the pro is that you'll get to go in jump in and try to figure out things very quickly and learn and grow and all these other things. I know I had a project where I had no idea about it and I just went and I found a different group of people. Like I, I searched on how I could ask someone a question on how to do this because I did not know how to do it. And I went, I found a Slack group and I was able to ask my question and they had lots of advice for me as well. And it's a group that I can go back to and ask additional questions to and other people asking questions and I can learn more from them. So sometimes it's a positive of being able to go out and find some information that you didn't know existed. So take that as a silver lining of, of all this. Um, but the con is if you're a person that needs a bit more structure, um, you might find it difficult to kind of ramp up, get started, or even want to be in a situation where you have to continuously jump back and forth through several different things. And maybe you like to focus on one thing and like, let me focus on this for like a sprint. And then let me focus on something else for like a sprint. And then maybe that's how you like to do things. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just a different mindset. And so keep again keep all of these things I will say time and time again keep that in mind as you are interviewing as you are talking with people etc about different roles and responsibilities and what you're expected to do at what you're expected to do at these different positions and whatnot so the last thing culture so usually culture is clearly defined um, within a company, sometimes it's not. So typically with smaller companies, they might still be trying to figure out their culture, what that looks like. And again, you can clearly, you know, you could help define the culture if that's what you're interested in, but it can be easier to see if you're going to get along with people. So that could be something to think about there. But one of the pros is that when it comes to culture and if you're going to fit in, you really want to spend the extra time when it comes to a smaller company, um, really trying to figure out if you're really going to get along with these people because again, smaller company. So you, even though you can be on different teams and such, and that's great, um, depending on how many employees are there, it's still a good idea to make sure that you're, you feel comfortable there. And so, uh, again, through the process of interviewing and all these other things, make sure that you are um, definitely figuring out the culture and how they respond to certain things, the expectations and uh, you know the unanswered questions. Like, what do you do with those? Like, how do we figure that stuff out? So make sure you're asking those kinds of things in the beginning. And then when it comes to culture in generally, one of the cons is like, it's, it, it's more tempting to hire people that look like the people that are already there. So, and it, and it, 
creates an environment that's not as diverse and it's not as, you know, with like-minded people. And it, you know, it just kind of gets to be a little uh, less diverse and more like everything looks the same. And so typically it's pretty easy to see like, okay, how does this company handle um, diversity? What do they think about their culture? Because a lot of times the people will show you like just, what the people look like and stuff like that will show you kind of how the culture is at these different companies. And then also everything that they put on their website, their values, their mission, all those sorts of things are going to give you like these green lights or red lights on what the company is actually like. And if you even want to work there yourself, if there is no clear defining, there's no clear definition of culture or anything of the like, then you might want to skip town. <laughs> you you don't want to work somewhere where they don't, they're like, I don't know what our culture is. It's like, Oh, that's not good. I, I will say this, that of all the smaller companies I've worked with, they've, they've had some definition of a culture and mission and values that they follow. So make sure that you are looking for those cues and if not, then you are asking those cues as well during the interview process too. And I pinpointed a lot of this stuff for like the interview process because typically this is when you're getting to know the company and you're really trying to figure out if it's a good fit. So I would definitely, uh, like I say, this ask the questions before you get there. And I know uh, you may not get like the most genuine response because some people might just be like, oh, let me just tell them this. Uh, and then, you know, so you might not get genuine, genuine answers, but let's hope that the person that is interviewing you is, is going to be open enough to give you a answer that is the honest truth and not something that just makes them look good. So. Overall, working at a small company and being a developer at a small company, you might have to put in more hours. You might have to put in more um, work time and you might have to do a little bit more research to find what you're looking for. But to be honest, it's fairly similar in the sense of you're going to have to go find information out. It's just who you're going to be looking to, to for that information may be outside resources instead of maybe the person sitting next to you if it's a larger company. So uh, just kind of keep those things in mind as you are looking for your next job or you're at your job and you're wondering like, hmm, you know, am I experiencing any of these things? Maybe you're not experiencing any of the things I mentioned. and you know, that's cool for you. You know, that's great. If you have a great structure at your company and you have um, a pretty good like process of how y'all do y'all's work, that's awesome. If you have an amazing culture and it's clearly defined and everyone knows what to expect. If you have a great team of people that know what the business needs are and you know, are hyper focused on getting those things done, then that's amazing. That's awesome and it's great for you. But at the same time, from what I've experienced, these are the things that I've, you know, come across that is like, oh, this could use some work. And in my experience, not everyone is great at everything and that's okay. So room for improvement is a good thing, I'd say. Uh, anyhow, thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a like, share it to anyone you think may find this information helpful. And as always, take care of yourself and be kind to others. I'll see you guys in the next video.